uh, my privilege now to welcome uh, Sister Jean Guthrie. She has her own uh, beauty care uh, company, which was established in 1980. So it's been going for a long time, but she's not just concerned about outer beauty, but uh, I'd say even more concerned about inner beauty. And Jean will be sharing with us this morning about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. Jean, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Over to you. Well, thank you so much. It's a great privilege to be part of this meeting this morning. And uh, as you said, you have asked me to speak and I will briefly on the Holy Spirit and Pentecost. Can we just pray? Holy Spirit, I yield to you. We welcome your divine presence here this morning in our midst. We thank you that you're God in action here on earth. And we thank you that you're the one that glorifies Jesus, magnifies Jesus, reveals Jesus and illuminates Jesus to us. And I ask this morning that you'll pour out your spirit upon us, fresh oil, Lord, the wind of heaven, new wine, and the fire. I pray that your fire will fall this morning as it did on the day of Pentecost. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' powerful name, I pray. Amen. May I just say, who would have believed that a year ago the whole world would have been locked down and the church would have been shut down? It was the cleverest thing that the devil tried to do was to shut down the church. But I just want to say to you today that the church will move forward and the church is moving forward. The church will multiply and the church will rise up out of these ashes. And we are on the verge, the very cusp, the very edge of the greatest revival the world has ever seen. It's going to sweep the world. Many call it the, the um, end time revival, and we are part of it. But I want to say that uh, Jesus said, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said that. And he stands over his word to perform it. So the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And then again, in the book of Daniel 2.44, the God of heaven, God himself, set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. The kingdom is left to us, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. The kingdom will keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until he comes. How? Not by might nor by power, but by the spirit, says the Lord. And how will this kingdom come? Yes, by the spirit, but also the great commission. Jesus' last words before he ascended to his disciples were, go into all the world, to all nations, preach the gospel to every creature, and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and signs and wonders will follow. Because, he said, I will accompany you. So how will the signs and wonders follow? By the Holy Spirit in us. He performs the signs, he performs the wonders, and he's sending out in the, us out in the power of the Spirit. But then in Acts 1 verse 4, Jesus said to his disciples, wait. Praise the Lord, we don't have to wait today because we can receive the Holy Spirit right now, right here this morning. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're going to have an opportunity this morning to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to pray in a heavenly language. But he said to them, wait for the promise of the Father, which I have told you about. And then he said, not many days from now, you shall be introduced, you shall be placed in, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, baptized, drenched, soaked, 
marinated in the Holy Spirit. I think it was Wigglesworth who said, oh, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to never come out of it. That's God's plan for us, is to live in the Spirit. And then in Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And the Amplified says, power, ability, efficiency, and might to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the very ends of the earth. The power has been given us to be his witnesses. So he told them to wait. They, they'd been given the Great Commission, but he said, wait, they could not go without the power. So then what happened? On the day of Pentecost, the birth of the church, the church was birthed in fire. On that day, 120 waited. Some might have left, but 120 waited. And suddenly, because the Holy Spirit comes suddenly, suddenly there came the sound. And we're beginning to hear that sound again, a sound of a rushing, mighty gale force wind. This was not a sacred atmosphere or a church atmosphere. This was a mighty gale force wind, the sound of it that came into that upper room where they were waiting. First, the presence of God, the wind, and then the power. On each of them, there was a flame of fire, tongue-shaped flame of fire. They each received a flame. He makes his ministers flames of fire. And then the Bible says they were all filled. They were all filled. They were all filled. They all were diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke, all spoke in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I just want to say something about praying in the Spirit. It's the most powerful, powerful tool that Jesus has given us. And Praying in the Spirit is the physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that tool has been given to us. According to Jude, Jude, the book of Jude, verse 20, the Bible says, Beloved, that's you, that's me, that's all of us. Beloved, build yourselves up. And then the Amplified says, make progress in the Spirit and rise higher and higher like a tall edifice praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, why wouldn't you want that? That is such a powerful tool. And then again, in the book of Romans, it says, Romans chapter eight, it says this, if you know not how to pray, then pray, pray in the spirit. Because when you pray in the spirit, you pray according to the will of God. This is so powerful when we get a hold of this. When we know not how to pray, it may be that uh, it's a wayward child. It may be your marriage. It may be an addiction. But the Bible says, pray in the spirit and you will pray according to the will of God. And that's the most powerful, powerful tool that we've been given. And I read a book once by Michelle Schabler called The Hidden Power of Praying in Tongues. And in that book, he said, it's not a magic wand, but if you prayed in the spirit for 30 minutes a day, some people probably pray, pray, pray for much longer. But he just said, if you prayed for 30 minutes, he said, in 40 days, your life will never be the same. But when I read that, I was on a flight to London. I was so riveted by this book that the flight didn't seem as long as it should have been because the book was so riveting and so anointed. I took the challenge. This was several years ago. And I, I've never let up on that challenge. And sometimes, obviously, you pray for more than 30 minutes. And if you're praying for less, I encourage you today, and if you're not praying at all in the spirit, I encourage you today to begin to pray. If you're praying for five minutes, pray for 10. If you're praying for 15 minutes, pray for 20. And begin to pray more and more in the spirit, because what begins to happen is the flesh is flushed out, and the spirit begins to dominate. And you begin to hear with the ear of the spirit, see with the eye of the spirit. And then there are things within you that suddenly aren't there anymore because the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier has rooted them out. And it's such a wonderful tool. So I just want to encourage you. But I also want to say what happened to Peter? Because Peter had denied Christ three times. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he followed 
as Jesus was being arrested at a distance. He sat around a fire and the servant girl recognized him and said, you were with him. And he said, I know not the man. And then another said, but I saw you with him. And he said again, I tell you, I know not the man. And then another said an hour later, but it's a truth, you were with him. And he said, I tell you, I know not the man. And the cock crowed and Peter wept. Peter, filled with fear and trembling, had denied Christ. What happened to Peter? I'll tell you what happened to Peter. Pentecost happened to Peter because on that day, Jesus had forgiven him and baptized him in the Holy Spirit. And he went out that day. They didn't hang around after they'd been filled with the power of God. They went. They were electrified. Peter went out and he stood up electrified and began with a loud voice to shout out the gospel. He began to preach the gospel. And 3,000 were saved that day. And a few days later, another 5,000. This was the power. This was the boldness that Jesus said, wait for. And when you have it, then you're to go. He says, I'm sending you. Fill your horn with oil and go. And we're to go. We're a go church. It's time to go. The church is barren without the Holy Spirit. The church right now is very, very passive. The church needs to make a stand. And it's time now. We have a window of opportunity that Jesus has given us because he's coming soon. And he's given us that window of opportunity. And what happened then to Peter? Peter with John at the gate beautiful. There was Peter, John going up to the temple and the crippled man since his mother's womb looked at them wanting arms, money, and Peter and John looked at him and said, look at us, silver and gold we have not, but what we have we give unto you, the anointing, the Holy Spirit. That's what they had. What we have we give unto you. Rise up and walk. And immediately, the Holy Spirit suddenly, immediately, immediately, his ankle strengthened. He stood up. And he began walking and leaping and praising the Lord, walking, I can't sing a tune, but never mind, walking and leaping and praising the Lord. And then again, in Acts 5, verse 15, we're told that Peter, as he walked, the sick were brought out and they were being healed under his shadow. I want to say to you this morning, same power, same power. The same power that Jesus had that surged through him when he healed the woman with the issue of blood. Same power. And that same power surged through Peter, emanated out of him. And there was an atmosphere around him of the power of God and people were being healed under his shadow. Well, it's the same power. Beloved, have we got the power? because it's the power we're going to need in these last days. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to change this nation. And it's this revival that's going to sweep the world. And you will see that uh, the church is going to arise like never before, and we will be part of it. So, you know, Jesus said on the, um, after that great feast, he stood up and he said, if anyone thirst, if anyone thirst, come unto me and drink. Come unto me and drink. And I pray nearly every morning, Lord, I've come to you to drink. And he said, even as you drink rivers, not a trickle, not a stream, but rivers of living water are going to flow out of your innermost being. This he spoke in connection with the Holy Spirit. Rivers of life, rivers of peace, rivers of power, rivers of healing, rivers of joy, pouring out of you and touching the lives of others around you. It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. The church was out the Holy Spirit, as I think it was Reinhardt who said, the church without the Holy Spirit is another lifeless religious system that has to be upheld by human effort. And then again, we need to get back 
to the original band of Christianity, the original band of Christianity, brand of Christianity, not some diluted, de-gutted, tranquilized, sentimentalized, traditionalized, compromised version of it. When you compromise with the Holy Spirit, when you compromise with the gospel, the power shrinks. There is no power. We cannot compromise, and I've just heard what your mission statement is, it's too wonderful. We cannot compromise. And we're living in an era where the church is very, very compromised. And there's no power. There's no power when we compromise. The gospel is the power unto salvation. And I just want to say, this is such a vast subject. And all I can say is, I long for more of the Holy Spirit. I pray for more of the Holy Spirit. I know that I have to die to self because the more we die to self, the less of our old nature, we must decrease, he must increase. The more of him, the more he will be able to be used of him by his spirit. And I just want to say there are no celebrities in the church. Jesus Christ is the only celebrity. He's the one that is to be high and lifted up. He's the one that was crucified for you and me. He's the one that died on that cross, took our sins, paid the debt in full. The least we can do is live for him and give us our lives totally. He's looking, he's looking for a holy church. And one pastor said, because they were wondering when this lockdown came, was this the end? And the Lord spoke to a pastor and said, it's not the end. It's not the end yet. But he said this, I am separating my church, the holy from the profane, the true from the false, the wheat from the chaff. It's time, beloved, for us to be separated. Yes, it can be lonely sometimes, but God wants us to be separated unto him. We, in this world, we can be used in this world, but we're not of this world. The world has no attraction for me anymore. All I want is to have a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit and to, to move to another level with the Holy Spirit. And there are many, many voices. I want to hear the voice of the Spirit. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so the more time we pray in the Spirit, the more we're going to hear his voice. And I just want to ask today, um, when was the last time you had a drink of the new wine? When was the last time? And when was the last time you received fresh oil? When was the last time you were praying in the Spirit? Maybe all of you pray in the Spirit every day. But all I want to say is the more we get into the Spirit, the more we will live in the Spirit, and the more we'll be led by the Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And, you know, I love the scripture in the book of Luke that says when Jesus came from the Jordan, he was filled with the Spirit. He was controlled by the Spirit, and he was led by the Spirit. This is where we want to be, filled, controlled, and led by the Spirit. And uh, revival is coming. The, the revival has been described as the inrush of the Spirit into a body that appears to be coming a corpse. Now, this church has to be, uh, be awakened. The church is the answer, and the church has to rise up, and we are the church. And so I pray now. Um, I just felt if you can stand, then we'll stand. But if not, that's fine. I thought we should just raise our hands. If there's anybody listening to this message, you're born again. Yes, you know you're saved. You know you're going to heaven. And that's wonderful. And there's a well of water in you. And Jesus said, you must be born again. And when he says you must, you must. It's not an alternative. It's an ultimatum. You must be born again. It's the born again believers filled with the spirit that are going to change this nation. So you must be born again. And then again, he says in the book of John, I am seeking those who will worship me in spirit and in truth, for you must worship in spirit and in truth. He says must again. So if you have, are born again, and, and I'm sure you all are, but if you're not, give your heart to Jesus today, repent, and he'll come into your life, and he'll give you a whole brand new life. You'll start drinking the new wine today, be intoxicated with the new wine. How wonderful. And then if you've not had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's a gift. Jesus wants you to be baptized in his spirit. He wants your body to be that tabernacle, that temple of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is to ask him. 
to please baptize you in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And when you ask and believe, you will receive. If you don't want this, it'll never bother you. But Jesus will never give you a gift that isn't a good gift. So let's just pray. And should there be anybody here who is maybe hearing this message, who is not sure, and you haven't had that wonderful gift of praying in the spirit, let's just pray. And you could repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you today to baptize me in the power of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I receive now in faith. And maybe we can just all begin to pray for a minute in the spirit, because as you raise your hands, God wants to refresh you. He wants to pour out right now upon you. If you would open your heart and receive fresh oil, fresh oil, new wine, new wine. Let the wind of heaven come. Let the rain of heaven and let the fire, beloved. The Bible says, stir the gift, the gift of the spirit. Fan the flame, fan the flame. Ignite the fire. The church was born in fire on the day of Pentecost. That same fire today is available for you and me. And we will never set this nation on fire unless we ourselves are on fire. So I pray that you're being ignited this morning. You'll allow the Spirit of God to touch you, that he'll take you into a new level of the Holy Spirit as you yield and yield and yield. And I close with this. There was a Russian who went to England and he could hardly speak the language, but God started using him in the miraculous, the signs and wonders. And his peers pressed him, what is your secret? He said, it was so sacred to me, I did not want to share it, but they pressed and pressed and pressed. And then he said, I found that the presence of God was so precious to me that I said I would obey him at every turn. And he said, I yielded and yielded and yielded. And he said, I found that I was not myself, my tongue, my thoughts, myself. I was no longer myself. And I realized Jesus Christ was at work within me. And I was clothed, clothed with another power altogether. So that's how we get closed, by yielding. And when we pray in the spirit, I know you've got prayer meetings later today. Uh, Ramad, we can pray for a moment. Can we just raise our voices and pray in the spirit because you will build yourself up just for a moment. Uh, Ramad, pray, 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 beloved, in the spirit and begin to build yourself up and never, 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 never spend a day where you do not pray in the spirit. It's going to make such a difference in your life and you're going to begin to walk more and more in the spirit and less and less in the flesh. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for this moment. Amen. Let's just uh, take a moment before we hear from Sister Pearl. Let's just take a moment, just about a minute and and each one, just let's just pray out loud. If you can pray in the Holy Spirit, then do so. Otherwise, pray with your understanding. And, um, and then uh, I will end that for us in about a minute. Okay, so let's all just pray. If you want to unmute, you can unmute. And let's just pray together. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> 
Amen, amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Sister Jean. We really appreciate it. And may the Lord continue to bless you and your family, your business, your ministry, uh, to reach many with the power of the Lord. So God bless you. And please, please join us again. Thank you are you. wonderful to hear from you. Thank you.